Hey, it's Jason from Bohemia Bees, and, and we're here in the apiary today, and we're going to do a different video than we typically have done. We're going to do a video for those new beekeepers out there that maybe follow on my channel or maybe some of the other channels here on, on YouTube and other social media platforms. Uh, it's a lot of information to learn and to take in when you're starting out on beekeeping. We know that. Believe me, I was there, and I'm learning every single day. Uh, but I'll tell you, you're not alone, right? Um, so we're going to give you some tips that, um, that maybe you can use as a new beekeeper. Maybe be uh, tips that you didn't get when you're in one of your classes or in a book somewhere. Uh, these are tips that we find are helpful as beekeepers once we've sort of kind of matured in beekeeping a little bit. Uh, we're in no way experts, but we definitely are uh, have some experience to be able to share with other beekeepers, especially new beekeepers uh, that are looking to try to, you know, kind of fine tune their craft. So. You know, one of the tips that I typically give new beekeepers when I teach classes is about equipment and the things that kind of equipment that you need. Uh, you naturally can go online and buy a beekeeping equipment kit uh, that has all sorts of tools and, and things that you could use within beekeeping, whether it be smokers or hive tools, uh, you know, different type of protective gear, uh, various other types of things that you would need to be a beekeeper. Um, what I will tell you is what they don't tell you um, is to make sure that you have more than one hive tool, right? So I'm always in my, my uh, apiary inspecting my colonies and I realize that when I get to this colony, I close it up, I've set my hive tool somewhere else and I can't find it. I can't seem to locate where that hive tool is. So when you're going out and buying equipment, maybe you pass on buying that big kit that has everything you think you need and really just focus on a few tools, right? Buy several of these, right? So that you have a second one right, that you can grab, or a third one, potentially, that you can grab. Have multiple hive tools, because at the end of the day, you're out in the apiary, you're working, you're probably sweating in your gear, uh, and, and you really can't afford to be in the middle of trying to do an inspection on a colony and not have a hive tool at your disposal. Leave one in an apiary. If there's a, Some people put magnets on the side of their stand. Some people put multiple ones in their hive tool kit or their kit. But I just have a few in my apiary different styles, different types that I like to use. It helps me to make sure I have the right tools for the job. So there's a lot of other tips that I could share with you, but I don't necessarily want to be the only one to do it. So why don't I rely on some of my friends in the beekeeping space, uh, maybe some other YouTube channel people that you recognize to give you some tips on what they would tell you or recommend to you if you were a new beekeeper um, that maybe they didn't teach you in Beekeeping 101. Again, these are just my opinions and my perspectives, and, but you don't always have to take my word for it. So check them out. It's hot today. Hey there, everybody. My name's Jennifer King, and I'm a hobbyist beekeeper in beautiful Gulfport, Mississippi. My family refers to me as the Bayou Honey because obviously my bees make honey, and we live really near the Gulf of Mexico, and there are bayous everywhere. So Bohemia Bees has asked me to speak to you today about something I wish I would have known as a new beekeeper. So what I've chosen to talk to you about is how to know when it's time to add a second body hive onto your single deep body. So as a new beekeeper, you're gonna be super excited um, when your bees either come in the mail through a package or when your nucleus colony is um, ready to install from a local beekeeper that you bought it from. So you're gonna have all of these beautiful boxes that you've painted and you're gonna to wanna to stack them all up and dump your bees right in. But please do not do that, okay? You're gonna to wanna to start them out in the single deep body alone because um, they're gonna be a really small colony to begin with. And you're gonna to wanna to wait to stack any more boxes on them until that first single has seven to eight frames fully drawn out with really good bee coverage on those frames. Because if you give them too much space, they, they don't have enough bees to defend that space from pests. And also they don't have enough bees yet to um, heat and cool those areas properly. So you're gonna wanna wait until you have at least seven to eight frames fully drawn out with good bee coverage on before you stack any more uh, deep body boxes or your honey supers on. Okay, everybody. I hope you have a great beekeeping season this year. Bye. Hi, I'm Corey Stevens. 
I'm in southeast Missouri where I have my apiaries and I, I run and own Stevens Bee Company. I was asked what advice I would give beginners. Um, it's pretty similar to the advice I give most beekeepers and it would be to focus on your queens. Um, the queen's the cornerstone of your entire colony and in turn all of them are the cornerstone of your entire operation. So how productive they are, how disease tolerant they are, how easy they are to work, you know, if they're mean or not, all that's genetically related. I wouldn't focus too much on the genetic side of it if you're a beginner, but keep in mind that your queens control everything. And if you want different traits or something special or easier to work, um, you can change all that by changing your queens. So my advice to new beekeepers would be to focus on the queens, identify where you can get quality stock, um, you know, so that you can requeen or stay in the game. And long term, you probably need to ease yourself into queen rearing to where you can raise your own um, from stock that really works well with you and, and your style. So that would be my advice. Focus on your queens, make sure they're happy and healthy and from good stock and a lot of problems take care of themselves. Hi, my name is Jason Huff from Wood Camp Farm. I uh, live in Mount Airy, Maryland, Central Maryland, sort of west of Baltimore and north of DC. Uh, my two minute tip on beekeeping is, this is the perfect time, is nutrition. Uh, everybody knows springtime, feed your bees, fall, feed your bees. But we get into this nice weather, it's 90 degrees, We've been getting some rain, life is good, there's white Dutch clover around, and especially here in Central Maryland, and, and things are different in other places. But in Central Maryland, even though you see clover and we've gotten the rain and there's a trickle of a flow, this is the time of year when people mess up and don't feed their bees. Um, I just happened to buy this yard of bees that I'm in. Um, the guy pulled honey off not too long ago, and uh, probably two, three weeks ago, and I haven't come back to feed yet. So what I'm gonna show you, that these hives are, even though it's the middle of summer and plenty of bees everywhere. This hive is a perfect frame of an example. There is no food in this frame. You can see anywhere there. There's brood, there's plenty of bees. You can look down in here and there, there's brood and bees. But as you look through, can you flip that over for me, Brett? And you're looking in here, there's a little bit of uh, pollen. We never really run short of pollen in our area. But if we can look down at this brood, it is just not really all that pretty and you don't have that pretty milk brood and white shine behind there it, the brood just sort of looks dry so that would be the one thing that i would tell people to learn to look at is you want to see that layer of honey up in the corners of the frames which is not you know, there's a little bit right here but as you can see you go right from capped honey to to open there is no ring of nectar there and the brood is starting to look dry so we're, we're here feeding and, and putting buckets on right now so that should change. Um, the other half of nutrition is the protein, which is the pollen. So I haven't spoke about that because this time of year it's not that big of a deal. But the carbohydrate, the nectar, and, and the honey right now, these bees are these bees are hungry. They've got food, but they're going to go. They're going backwards right now, and they'll be in trouble come uh, late August and September when you know, the queen has quit laying and they're going backwards. So timely feeding and nutrition all year, not just spring and, and late fall. Thank you. Good afternoon. I was asked to provide some feedback to new beekeepers on something that isn't taught in books or something that is really important that new beekeepers should know and in a sense embrace. Now the obvious tips of advice I'd like to give would be to look after the basics, queens, nutrition and disease control. That's the boring ones, but I thought I'd provide just a little insight on something else to which I feel a lot of new beekeepers overlook, and that is queen cells. Queen cells, whether they're swarming cells or supersedure cells as used through replacements, uh, they're, they're typically looked the wrong way by new beekeepers. They misjudge the purpose of them, they panic and they end up killing them all, ultimately killing the colony, and then they can't figure out why the colonies died. And I just want to point out that queen cells 
through the act of swarming or replacement is a very natural act and as a beekeeper you need to learn to embrace them. Embrace them in a way that doesn't provide an overreaction when you find them. And I'll show you kind of what I mean here. You want to manage your colonies in a way which you're managing the balance of the population. And if you'll find once you're beekeeping, you'll understand what I mean. When you tip that balance, the colony will go into swarm mode. But if you can manage that colony within that balance, you'll be able to maintain the population without them swarming off on you. That's kind of our jobs as beekeepers. What these colonies will do is very naturally propagate when they get when they tip that balance, when they get a little bit too strong, they'll develop swarm cells. And those swarm cells are used to uh, re actually requeen the colony because the old queen flies away with the swarm. So those swarm cells are the act of requeening the old hive. They also use these cells as queen replacements. And it's hard to tell the difference between the two a lot of the time. But queen replacements is just an actual act of superseding that queen within this colony to refresh her. And a lot of the time they'll refresh the queen within the colony before they'll cast off the swarm just to help uh, improve their chances of a successful um, reproduction event. When I'm tipping back my colonies, I'm continually reading the bottom of the, the hives, the frames, and looking for that act of swarm. So I'm counting my frames. I'm seeing the size of population and I'm looking what's going on underneath the, the nest here and you know they're building out drone comb and that's all good stuff that's a good sign there's lots of bees down here and then you'll just notice all these cups now these cups are just that they are cups until they have a developing larva in there which in turn to a queen cell nothing going on in these ones here so they just have them on hand all the time to be able to provide that act of swarming or that act of um, replacement. Typically you'll find swarming cells in the bottom and supersedure cells within the combs. Uh, the reason being is because when they're swarming usually they're big, they're hanging and because they can hang they are able to manage the temperature around those cells on the bottom of the, of the frames. If it gets really cold they have to retract the bees retract off those swarm cells and it immediately ends that act of swarming. Whereas a queen replacement, they like to put it on the frame. And the reason why they like to put it on the frame is because they can carry through that act, look after that cell, even through all these variable weather conditions. When a beekeeper finds a cell, whether it being a supersedure cell or a swarm cell, the worst thing you can do is cut them. You have to understand, ooh, a little bit of rain. We'll have to understand that those cells are very important to the viability of that colony. Typically when you start seeing cells, that colony has already proceeded through that act in which you basically have to let them follow through with it. If you go in there as a beekeeper and start cutting cells because you don't want them to swarm or you misjudge it as being a supersedure, you're in a very effect killing off that colony. Typically through a supersedure, they've already killed off that queen and they're just in the act of replacing her with another cell. So you kill off that cell, that colony is dead. Same with swarming. A lot of the time that queen has already cast off the swarm and there are cells in there to replace her. If you're going to cut the swarm cells, make sure you always leave one because that is the essence of life within that colony. So for a tip of advice from a professional beekeeper, is to don't panic when you see cells. Make sure that you identify the purpose, the stage, and embrace those cells. Make sure that those cells, at least one or two, are allowed to emerge to follow through whatever process that they want to proceed with. Because in a, in a lot of ways, we are just managing their process. In a lot of ways, we just have to let them follow through with it. Hey gang, Yappy Bee Man here, and here's my quick tip for the video. Any given time of the season, this box can be populated with about 97% female. Well, that's a lot of ladies to make mad, right? So, think, think about this. They're all descendants of a queen, and uh, as such, they need to be treated like ladies. So, while you're, uh, while you're working your bees, while you're inspecting, while you're doing things, go slow, be methodical, and have a plan. 
because, well, nobody wants to go home with a black eye or puffy lip, right? We want to do one thing as beekeepers, and that is get to the honey. So, if you'll go and you'll treat them like ladies, you give them the respect they deserve, you might just get to the sweet stuff, right? And that's my quick tip for the day. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, it helps you out. Have a great day. Hello bearded bee people from another channel that probably don't know who I am. I'm Brett from B and K Bees and I was asked to give a couple of minutes of thought as to what I wished I had known when I was starting off as a beekeeper. I was honored with the uh, request to input what I wish I had known when I was a beginning beekeeper. I've thought about this quite a lot because I think it's a useful concept for us more advanced beekeepers to think about when we're dealing with beginning beaks. So I have a couple of go-to things that I like to talk about in this conversation. And number one, that is get into your bees. Get into your bees every single week, whether you think that they need anything or not. That experience that you're going to gain with each entrance into your colony is going to be invaluable as you're trying to become a really truly successful beekeeper over the course of your first few years with bees. So get into them every single week. Set a time and try to make it a nice sunny day portion, but try to get into them every single week so that nothing gets past you and so that you can learn all that you can learn during your first year as a beekeeper. Now, just because you're getting into them every week doesn't mean that there aren't going to be frustrations. There are a lot of mistakes that are out there to be made. I have not made all of them yet, so I'm still learning about all of the ways you can screw up. So you're going to make mistakes during your first couple of years. And for that reason, I think it's really important to harvest some honey during your first year or two. Um, so when you're getting into your colonies throughout the year, pay attention in that brood area and in those supers for uh, frames that are starting to get filled with nectar. Because as they start to get filled with nectar, it's less and less likely that they're gonna get filled with brood or pollen or any other substance that those bees might wanna fill it with. So you just keep an eye on that, move it to the perimeter of the box, and when honey harvest time comes around, grab that frame and enjoy it. Share it with your friends and family because I think that that fulfilling aspect at the end of your first year is essential for us to feel good about our second and third year as a beekeeper because of those aforementioned frustrations that are just inevitable when you're getting started into this hobby. So work your bees every single week, harvest some honey, and watch YouTube videos because there's so much to learn and so many awesome beekeepers here on this platform that are ready to help. Uh, I'm included. Like I said, my name is Brett. I'm from B and K Bees. So thank you very much for the opportunity to enter this into this video. I am honored to be uh, a part of this video with a bunch of other cool mm -hmm. YouTube and beaks. So get out there and have some fun with your bees. See ya. Hey guys, this is Cricket from Phoenix, Arizona. And I have with my partner about a hundred hives and most of them come, maybe even all of them come from removals actually when I think about it. Um, and many of them are Africanized. And so that's always fun. But that's not what I'm talking about because I wanted to talk about what I think is one of the most useful and um, last things you might think about when becoming a beekeeper. And that is um, keeping notes because we always think that we're going to remember everything and we almost never do. And so you think you're going to remember, but you don't remember. Even the next in inspection that you do, you think you're going to remember what was in it the brew, what the brood looked like, what the food looked like, but you don't. So my recommendation is to keep notes. Not only does it help with your inspections um, each time, but it also gives you a record for the next year and your whole beekeeping journey because it helped, part of beekeeping is learning the cycles of nature, learning the cycles of your weather, of the bloom, um, nectar flow, um, those kinds of things that if you keep a record of each year you'll look back on and wonder instead of wondering what you were doing or what you need to be doing you can look and say hey April 15th I needed to add a box then and so I'm ahead of schedule this time so that's those are some things that um, keeping notes is good for and the ways that I've seen people keep notes um, is a few various ways you can do it on apps um, that's probably convenient. All of these you just need to build the habit for. Um, apps are probably really convenient. I just haven't really used that. I have used my phone's notes 
to keep track um, sometimes, but again, it's just that habit, that consistency that is so hard. Also, I've seen people keep a notebook in a gallon size Ziploc bag and leave that on the hive. Um, and I like keeping a notebook. So I have a planner, mine's a copy planner, and I created pages for that um, for inspection sheets. Um, you can keep track of every hive that you have, give your hive a name, give your hive a number, um, and that way you can keep track of it that way. Um, even say where you have the hive located. So I have this inspection sheet. Each one of these represents a box. So a box with 10 frames, those um, numbers. And then there's a little key up here that tells what you find, like capped brood, eggs, larva, honey, you saw varroa in, on that frame or something. It's a simple little thing you can say. And at the bottom, you have um, yes or no questions you can circle. So I saw the queen, this needs a box. So that's a good one. Sometimes I get to my bee yard and I realize, oh my gosh, I was supposed to bring uh, some honey boxes and my bees are way out there. It takes me almost an hour to get there. So that's a little inconvenient. Or maybe you didn't buy a box. So that's, that's kind of important. Needs a box. Oh, I need to split it. Or um, you might put the mite count if you did that there. Really? Um, and then this is like a little hive tracker. So I, again, it's backwards. Hive tracker. So... Um, on this, I have your hive name or number, the location, the origin of the colony, who did you buy it from, or where did you get it, was it a removal, um, and the date. And then you're gonna put the queen's installation date, uh, what breed she is, and where you got her, queen breeder. And then you just, this is a place to keep count, uh, track of mites, mite count. So I put the date, the count, um, when I did treatments, what treatments I used. Again, you can't see it. Um, the honey harvest, did I get honey, when, and how much, and then just some other notes. So um, that's kind of basic helpful information that you can have. Um, keeping notes is super awesome, and again, it's just a habit, it's a consistency, and it's training yourself, and it's really hard. But if you want to be the best beekeeper um, around, that is what you're going to do. So my recommendation is keep notes and um, enjoy your beekeeping journey. Bye. Hey y'all, Dirt Rooster here coming to you on the Bohemia Bees channel with a quick tip for new beekeepers. When I started, the thing I wish I had known is how to properly manage the colonies for growth and how to, how to inspect and when to inspect. I didn't know bloom cycles. I didn't know what a flow was. I didn't know when there was a flow, I didn't know what the bees were foraging on. Those are the kind of things you need to know. You need to know what's blooming in your area, what the bees will forage on, when your flow is, and you need to know how to manage the space during a flow, during a dearth, uh, during winter. That That is pretty important to me, is knowing proper hive management, because I don't know how many colonies I lost to getting honey bound, queen has nowhere to, to lay the colony gradually becomes weak eventually small hive beetles come in and decimate the hive and then i'm left with a three stack of a mess with a lot of honey in it and very small brood pattern in the bottom of it no bees just small hive beetle larva making everything nasty so learn how to inspect and properly manage the bees space so that you will continue to grow your apiary with healthy colonies, with lots of honey production and lots of bee production. And that's my quick tip. And we're here on Bohemia Bees where beekeeping is more than just a hobby. It's an obsession. Wow, <laughs> that was some great advice from a lot of great beekeepers. I'll tell you what, that is exactly what the beekeeping community is all about. If I could give you any tip that you take away from this video, it's to network with all the other great beekeepers that are out there, large and small. There were some that have been doing it for a few years and there are others that are commercial beekeepers that you see on YouTube every single day. So make sure you go out to their channels, make sure you subscribe to their channels, make sure you follow them on whatever social media platform or whatever way you feel that you need to connect with those people, connect with other bee clubs in your community, 
help learn in that network. I said before you need more than one hive tool, but I believe you need more than one connection, more than one mentor, more than one just a single reference point to be a good beekeeper. We learn every single day. We're not all experts and we learn from the bees because they're the ones that are the most important mentors to learn from. Thanks for watching everyone. And as Randy said, remember here at Bohemia Apiary, beekeeping is definitely more than a hobby. It's an obsession. Thanks for watching everyone.